someone who has been on my mind a lot lately, a 19-year-old young woman in Kandagar, Afghanistan, who I've come to know over the last six months. I can't tell you her name for her own protection. I'll call her Samara here, but that's not her name. But here's her story. At the age of 11, Samara had to leave school because it was too dangerous for a girl to be in school. The first time we spoke on Skype, uh, she related to me something that made me sick. Sure, it was dangerous to go to school, but she said by age 11, she had to leave because already by then, the teachers were leering at her seductively, an 11-year-old. Thank God, if you'll excuse the expression, for the internet. It's because of the internet that Samara had access to the outside world. That would have been impossible a decade earlier, but because of that, when she was 14 years old, she managed to get a hold of one of my books called The Universe of Nothing, which appeared, I think, six months before the last Reason Rally. And then she saw the Reason Rally on a movie that uh, my friend Gus Alberto was here, directed, called The Unbelievers. And, uh, and a lot of yeah. people... Yeah, Woo! Gus, it's a great movie. And, and somehow she could watch that in Afghanistan, which amazes me. Those two things emboldened Samara to do two things. First of all, she decided she wanted to become an astrophysicist. And second, she realized she was an atheist. And most important, from that film especially, she realized she wasn't alone. And that was particularly important, and I'll come back to that theme in a bit. But over the next four years, she worked at home and taught herself advanced high school calculus and physics with a plan to one day leave Afghanistan and study in the outside world. I admit when her pen pal, Emily Roberts, first told me about this, Emily's from Iowa, she asked me if I would Skype with Samara, and I didn't believe the story. But I was so inspired by the possibility that it might be real that I agreed to have our first conversation on Skype, which, by the way, wouldn't have been possible without science. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I think that deserves applause. Sure, why not? So the first, the first conversation happened when Samara was in Karachi, Pakistan. She'd made the difficult journey there to take the SAT exam. She couldn't take it because for obvious reasons she wasn't allowed to let anyone know that why she was leaving Afghanistan and therefore she couldn't register in time and there was no room for her. But we talked anyway about physics and other things. And she was determined to return. And she was so full of hope and energy and enthusiasm and it really broke my heart because I was terrified for her and I was sure something bad was going to happen. But I decided then and there that I'd do anything I could to help her and I didn't do a lot but I did a little. Samara did return and she took her SAT exam and she scored higher than the US national average which maybe is a low bar but still. <laughs> this was a girl who had taught herself English had never taken a standardized test in her life, and she got higher than the US national average. Emily Roberts in Iowa, the remarkable woman who'd become her pen pal and first contacted me, got a local community college in Iowa to accept her, and, I, uh, and she helped her along with me in writing an admission essay for a university. I spoke with the president of my university, Arizona State University, which is an entrepreneurial university, and he agreed immediately that we would accept her after she spent a year in community college. I wrote her a recommendation letter and we raised money online so that she'd be able to apply for a visa to come to the United States and not be indigent so that she might get the visa application. Last month, she had her visa interview at the US consulate in Kandahar, armed with the admission letters, proof of funds, letters of recommendation like my own and all the other documents she needed. The interview lasted one minute and the visa officer refused her request stating that he felt she intended to become an illegal immigrant because she had a family in Canada. That was devastating for me when that happened. But, but Samara remained undaunted. Her courage and perseverance should inspire any of you who have felt here that the world gets in your way. She continues to believe that she's going to come here, and it's gotten easier. Happily, thanks to the Richard Dawkins Foundation and the Center for Inquiry, we managed to contact the Afghan desk in the State Department. And she's got another interview. Kristen Sinema, my congresswoman, who's also, by the way, a 